projectile motion. In this lesson, we're covering projectiles, gravity, tackling projectile motion problems when VI equals to zero, projectiles when VI is not equal to zero. Then we're going to answer some more complex problems, and then we're going to end with a bunch of practice. Anytime when the ball goes up and comes down, or just goes straight and then comes down, all of these instances are projectile motion, and we see them in everyday life all the time. The force of gravity. On Earth, the force of gravity causes all objects, no matter their size or mass, to accelerate downwards at 9.81 meters per second squared. However, different objects will fall at different rates due to air resistance. Air resistance is simply the force up on an object due to the air acting on it. You have the force of gravity acting down, but at the same time, you're going to have the force of air resistance acting up. Now, depending on how those two balance, the object is either going to float up in the air, it could go up, or it could go down if the force of gravity is bigger than the force of air resistance. However, if we remove that air resistance, then we see some really neat things, which is shown quite well in this video here. So now that you've watched that video, think about what's going to happen. You have two objects. One is pushed horizontally off a desk, while the other is dropped from the same height. So what do I mean by that? If we have a desk like this, and you have two objects, we're going to have object one here, and we're going to have object two here. Object one is going to be pushed horizontally off. So it's going to go like this, and eventually it's going to come down to the ground whereas object two is simply going to be dropped straight down. So which one do you think is going to hit the ground first? Assuming, of course, both have a VI equal to zero. That's going to be a key point. So make up your mind, and then watch this video here. They landed at the same time. It's pretty amazing. So why do you think this is? Well, no matter if the object is being dropped straight down, or if it's being shot horizontally and going straight down, both have the force of gravity 9.81 meters per second squared. They're both, excel Devin, do that part. They're both accelerating downwards at 9.8 meters per second squared down. So since they both have a VI of zero, they're gonna be moving at the same rate, no matter where you take a look. So if you stop the camera right here, they would be at the same height because they're traveling at the same speed. If you have the speed up here, and the speed down here, and it's equal to the speed here and the speed here, and they started from the same height, then they're going to be the same distance from the initial position. And same at the bottom. Since the velocity at the bottom is the same between both, they're going to hit the ground at exactly the same time, since the distance that they fall is identical. Need to know. A force is not required to keep an object in motion. In fact, an object will stay in motion unless a force acts upon it. Forces cause acceleration, and in the case of projectiles, there's only a downwards force and therefore a downwards acceleration, assuming we're neglecting air resistance. Tackling projectile motion problems. So how do we answer our projectile motion problems? Well, first of all, we need to read the question very, very carefully. We then need to go back and reread the question and list all the givens and unknowns that we have. We're even going to go as far as divide our velocity into its X and Y components. So you're going to have VIX, VIY, VFX, and VFY. We're going to choose one of our five kinematic equations. We're going to draw a quick sketch to give us a better idea of the problem and avoid careless mistakes. And then we're going to plug our numbers in and solve. Here again are the five kinematic equations that we're going to be using in projectile motion. Check your understanding. A ball is thrown from a window 10 meters above the ground with an initial horizontal velocity of 3 meters per second. So let's sketch that out. We have our ball right here. We know our ball is 10 meters from the ground, because that's what we're told. And we know that it has an initial horizontal velocity of 3.0 meters per second. Now we're going to sketch out what's going to happen to that ball. That's going to travel like that. How long will it take the ball to reach the ground? So that's time. And B, how far will the ball travel horizontally, as in its range? So that's going to be our dx. So now let's list everything. So our vx is going to be 3.0 meters per second. Our dx is unknown. So we'll call this the x side. And then we're going to have the y side over here. Our VIY is zero. Our VFY is unknown. Our distance in the Y direction is 10 meters. And our time is unknown. We can also put that time over here. Keeping in mind, of course, that the TX is going to equal to TY because it hits the ground at the exact same time as we just discussed. So A. A asks for how long will it take the ball to reach the ground? So time is our question in our Y direction. So we need to have an equation that has vi, d, t, and of course, a, because a is 9.8 meters per second squared. We're going to say down and right are positive for this question. So let's go back to our kinematic equations and find an equation that has d, vi, a, and t in it. So what we're going to use is we're going to use this one. d equals vit plus one half at squared. 
So D equals VIT plus one half AT squared. And that's VI YT. We know VI is zero, so we're going to cross that out. Distance we're told is 10, one half 9.8 T squared. When we rearrange, we're going to get 20 divided by 9.8 on the left hand side equals T squared. T is going to equal to the square root of 20 divided by 9.8, and that equals to 1.43 seconds. And since we know, of course, that Tx equals Ty, they're both going to equal to 1.43 seconds. So A says, how long will it take the ball to reach the ground? We need two sig digs in our answer, so our answer comes out to 1.4 seconds. B, how far will the ball travel horizontally, i.e., what is its range going to be? Well, that's dx. dx we know is equal to vx times t. vx we know is 3. Our time is 1.43. We got to use 1.43, not 1.4 to be more correct. And that comes out to be 4.29 meters. Two sig digs, we get 4.3 meters, and we'll call that forward. And that's our two answers. Check your understanding. A rubber duck is launched horizontally from the roof of a 32 meter tall building with a velocity of 8.6 meters per second. So first thing we gotta do is we gotta draw it out. So we know that our rubber duck is gonna be launched at 8.6 meters per second, and it's gonna follow a parabolic route that looks something like that. Our dx is gonna be here, and we know that our building is 32 meters high. A says, what is the time of flight? So time is a question. And B says, what is the duck's range? So first of all, we need to draw out our variables. So we're going to say that down and to the right are positive. And we're going to write everything out. So in the x section, dx, that's going to be its range, is unknown. tx, we don't know. And vx is 8.6 meters per second. That way. In the y direction, viy is 0. vfy is unknown. DY is 32 meters, and A is 9.8 meters per second squared. TY is also unknown. But again, like the last question, we know that TX equals TY. So let's solve for T. We're going to use the same equation we used in the last question. So we're going to say that D is going to equal to VIT plus 1 half AT squared. Distance is 32. That's 0. 1 half 9.8 times T squared. Left hand side is going to be 64 divided by 9.8 equals t squared. t is going to equal to the square root of 64 divided by 9.8, and that equals to 2.56 seconds. We need two sig digs in our answer, so it's going to be 2.6 seconds. So tx and ty are both equal to 2.6. So we can write that in 2.6. B says, what is the range of the duck? Well, dx is going to equal to vx times tx, which is going to equal to 8.6 times 2.56, 22.0 meters, two sig digs equals to 22 meters in that direction. So one answer, and there was our first answer right there. A child travels down a slide, leaving it with a velocity of 4.2 meters per second horizontally. So let's draw out that slide. So it looks something like that. So here's our child. He's traveling down the slide. And when he gets to the bottom, he's going to be shooting off that direction. And then something like that in our parabolic motion. The child then experiences projectile motion, landing in a swimming pool 3.2 meters below. So this is going to be 3.2 meters below. For how long is the child airborne? Well, in this case, we know that the distance in the y direction is 3.2 meters. We know that the VIY is 0 meters per second. We know the acceleration is going to be 9.8 meters per second squared. We're going to say that down and to the right are positive. And time is unknown. So A says, how long is a child airborne for? Well, we're going to use the same equation we used previous. D equals VIT plus 1 half AT squared. D is 3.2. We know that's 0. 1 half 9.8 t squared. So you're going to get 6.4 divided by 9.8 equals t squared. T 
time is going to equal to the square root of 6.4 divided by 9.8, and that equals to 0 0.808 seconds. We need two sig digs in our answer, so 0 0.81 seconds. Moving on to B. Determine the child's horizontal displacement while in the air. Well, that's dx. dx is question. tx is going to equal to ty, which is 0 0.8. 08 seconds we need to use the more precise number and vx we're told in the question is 4.2 meters per second that way so dx equals vx times t vx 4.2 t 0 0.808 and that gives us a range of 3.39 meters and two sig digs 3.4 meters that way C, determine the child's velocity upon entering the water. Now, this is a little bit more tricky. So as the child goes down the slide, so the child's going to go like this, and they're going to make that kind of motion. They're going to enter the pool at a motion similar to that. That's going to have a horizontal and vertical component to it. So what do we need to do? We need to find Vx and Vy, and that will allow us to solve for V final. So now we know Vx. Vx doesn't change. Vx is constant. So what we need to find is Vy, F. That's our question. We know the distance that the child falls is 3.2 meters. We know that they fall for 0 0.808 seconds. We know that Viy is zero, and we're looking for Vfy. So we need an equation that has Vf, T, D, and Vi, but also we know acceleration, 9.8 meters per second squared down. So now we have five variables. We only need four. So we need to find an equation that has at least four of those variables, including the VFY. So let's head back and have a look. So we can go ahead and use our first equation. A equals VF minus VI divided by T. So A equals VF minus VI over T. We need to get VF on its own. So we're going to multiply both sides by T. That crosses it with that. We're left with AT equals VF minus VI. We're going to add VI to both sides of the equation. And we're left with AT plus VI equals VF. VF is going to equal to A times T. So that's 9.8 times 0 0.808 plus 0. Because we know we have 0 initial velocity. And that equals to 7.92 meters per second down. So now we need to make a little bit of room. So our Vx, we already know, is 4.2. Our Vy, we just established, was 7.92. So our Vf is the square root of 4.2 squared plus 7.92 squared. And that equals to 8.96 meters per second. And we need to know theta. Theta is going to equal to tan minus 1, 7.92 divided by 4.2. And that equals to 62 degrees. So our final answer to two sig digs is going to be 9.0 meters per second. And we'll say in this draw it right, 62 degrees down.